Hello. So I wanted to kind of document the fact that we are once again, uh, I guess, re-evaluating the Grand Power P11. Um, so this is a Mark 12 variant. I have plenty of videos on this gun. Um, I've been taking it to the range. This, so we're going out this afternoon to shoot it. And this will be the third time within maybe uh, maybe a week and a half period where I'm taking this gun out. Uh, right now we're at 700, well, it's 1,759 rounds through the gun. Uh, we have not had any issues in a while with this gun. But uh, in the past three years, I've only taken it out maybe five times. Um, and in that five times I've shot maybe, hold on a second, let me see here, uh, 395. That's not exactly a whole lot, but one thing I have noticed in that period, uh, the last five range visits, even though they're between 2017 and 2024, and there's only been just under 400 rounds shot through the gun, I've been having no issues with the gun. Uh, my big complaint was that it would fail to go into battery a, a numerous amount of times. Um, I have looked up the, the whole range history of that gun. I keep everything in the spreadsheet, every range visit. Uh, after every range visit, I document my experience with shooting the range. I, you know, I keep track of range, uh, what do you call it, round count. Um, any issues I had to, with the gun, and I try and keep track of the type of ammo I'm shooting. I try and create as many data points as possible so that I can track them in case I have issues or I kind of notice these underlying issues. They're not really issues, but they are, you know, type of thing, like the failures to return the battery. Um, one thing, uh, there's a couple of things I noticed. Uh, through the course of the last five years of usage with this gun. Uh, so we just mentioned one, the fact that we haven't had any failures in that period and we've had close to 400 rounds through the gun. Uh, another thing is, is that during every range visit for the, within that time period, I have been cleaning the gun. Uh, not only that, I've been lubing the gun in particular spots uh, and you know what, to be honest, I've been doing that all the while. Um, so when I lube it, I lube the rails on the slide. I lube the barrel where the, uh, the cam pin, which is right here. Um, I, I lube that with oil. Um, I've been lubing the cam pin with oil. Um, and I'm making sure that the, the portion of the frame where the barrel rests um, that's either clean and it has a slight coating, coating of oil because that out of all of the parts after a range visit, like for instance, the last range visit, I shot a hundred rounds. Uh, it looked like I shot 500 <laughs> in that particular area of the gun. So, uh, that part of the gun gets ultra dirty and it makes me wonder if I should even be oiling it. I, you know, it's, it's a metal on metal part. Um, and I'm thinking a slight amount of a slight coating of oil should work uh, but I have been putting oil there it's just a matter of how much um, I, with this gun I don't think you should be like having it super wet because what's going to happen is is that all of that carbon is going to be absorbed by the oil and the next thing you know you have a paste uh, so I'm trying to avoid that uh, it's kind of annoying that I have to clean the gun after every range visit just to kind of uh, mitigate those return, uh, failure to return the battery issues. But, uh, you know, I'm doing what I have to do and I'm documenting everything, right? So uh, there's that. Uh, another thing is, is that I've been using some type of extra uh, I just manually traction up. on the grips. So back in 2017, I believe, wow, that came quick. 2017, uh, I started using like a, uh, a whole rubber, rubber grip. Um, that helped some, 
uh, but it wasn't nearly enough and I didn't, I didn't like the way it fit on the gun. It didn't look right. Um, so from there we went to, I had a, so if you've seen some of my bull armory video, videos, I usually have like this thick rubber band that 1911 owners typically use when they want to pin the grip safety. And so I was using one of those on this gun to give additional traction. And that was on there up until maybe two weeks ago. I removed it. Again, it was offering about the same amount of traction as the whole, whole grip was. Um, I decided to remove that and just try grip tape. This is the same tape that people put on their hockey sticks and on their tennis racket handles. Um, so... I did that, started doing that maybe a week and a half ago, um, and then I, it's still a little bit slick, so what I did was I added another layer uh, two days ago, so we're going to take it to the range and see how it shoots. Um, so those are the changes that, are, that I've made, and that might be why we're having less issues with uh, failures to return a battery. Um, another thing that I've done is, is that back in March of 2021, I reached out to Global Ordnance because I felt that maybe, maybe the recoil spring needed a refresh. Um, granted, I don't have a lot of rounds through the gun, and at that time, I probably had maybe 12, 1300 rounds through the gun. Um, they sent me a new recoil spring and I replaced it and that was in 2021 that could be a main contributor to the, you know the, the mitigation of the the fails to return the battery uh, so in combination all of those has probably helped but the whole reason I was wondering I mean I mean there's that and then there's one thing I, I did not mention um, so over time as I become more familiar with with my my guns uh, I shoot them a lot and out of all of the the guns that I have this one has the highest round count uh, this is one of the first guns that's actually the second gun that I, that I started carrying um, I'm very familiar with the gun but there are certain challenges with the gun one being the fact that I felt that it wasn't trustworthy since it kept having the fails to return the battery uh, so I stopped carrying it then, but I, I'm still shooting it as a range toy. Um, I've been getting a lot better. You know, practice makes perfect, right? Now, I'm not perfect, but looking at the last uh, range visit and then the one before that and comparing them to the other times I've shot this gun, it's readily apparent that I have gained some experience or I, you know, I've, I've been working on my uh, my grip discipline and I'm saying this because uh, maybe a year or so ago someone reached out to me through one of my grand power videos um, and she said that she was having the same issues with, uh, she either had a P1 or a P11 I can't remember which and so she was having the exact same issues and she was getting flustered and so she would give the gun to her husband and her husband would shoot it and he wouldn't have the issues. Uh, what, what she thought that it could be and what she thought her problem was, and she, she thinks it's why I'm having the same issue as well and that was limp wristing. Uh, so that's probably another reason why I'm not experiencing the issue. And I mentioned that because I mentioned it before. Uh, I am not above making mistakes. Uh, again, this is a journey for me. Uh, and every gun is different. I shoot some guns better than others, but it, it's solely attributed, attributed to, like, you know, everyone's, everyone's hands different. Everyone's makeup is different. Uh, my, my wrists are... They're not weak, but they're not strong either. Uh, my arms are, you know, I'm a medium build guy. Um, five, seven, 108 pounds. Uh, but I, I'm not stocky or anything like that. And I'm mentioning this because uh, one of the, you know, I mean, limp wristing 
could cause failures to return to battery. And that's what I've always complained about. And I do notice that when I, you know, prior to me using uh, uh, the grip tape, I was always struggling with the gun because the gun has a slick surface um, and there's not much uh, um, texturers on the uh, on the gun, not anything worthwhile. Uh, and so, you know, you're looking at this and see how slim the grip is and everything. And so it's thin when you turn around, you know, and look from a behind the gun profile. Uh, so there's not there's not a lot to work with. And then when you factor that in with someone who might have weaker hands or, or weak wrists and they, they're lacking, they're typically lacking in a grip control. Uh, yeah, that could be a factor. And so as I get better, I'm having less of an issue with that. We haven't seen any failures, failures return to battery in over five, one, two, three, seven years. Three, yep, seven years. Um, so, and, and again, granted, in between those seven years, I've only shot, I've only had five, what, five, six range visits. Uh, and I've only shot maybe 400 rounds through the gun. I'm also kind of watching how, what, what ammo I'm shooting. So the last three range visits I have. Give me a second here. It's my alarm to get ready to go to the range. Um, I have been shooting uh, Igman, uh, 124 grain. Um, I have been shooting some Winchester white box. Uh, then last week I shot a good bit of what is it? Um, Herder's Defense, JHP. Um, so, so I'm sharing all this just so you know um, that I, you know, I might have shorted. You know, I, I'm hoping to get to to 2,000 rounds without issues, and I don't want to get my hopes up because every time I get my hopes up with this gun, uh, I, I get disappointed. Uh, the failures to return to batteries aren't outright failures because this has second strike capability. It's a DASA gun, it's hammer fired. Uh, so when it does go into, uh, so when it does fail to return the, the battery, what happens is, is like lots of times when I'm shooting, I don't notice because I'm focused on the target. And, 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 you know, and so when I'm shooting, the first thing I'll, I'll notice is, is that I pull the trigger and nothing happens. Uh, and then when I let go, what happens is, is the slide moves forward. So it resets. Uh, and so I can immediately pull the trigger and get another round off, but it's in DA mode when it resets. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not an outright failure, but it's a hang up. It's, it's something that I don't like. And I've always thought that it was because the gun was dirty, but now I'm thinking that it's a combination of multiple issues. Uh, when when it does sometimes do that, it's not always when the gun is dirty. You know, I've you know I, there's been a more than a few times where I've cleaned the gun, taken it to the range, and it does it within the first uh, mag of that first session of a range visit. So. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's always going to be the, the ammo that's the cause. And it might not be, might not be any of it. I mean, typically when I have like real glaring issues with ammo, it's because the ammo is out of spec. And this gun has tight tolerances. It doesn't tolerate uh, shoddy uh, brass cuts and, and, you know, out of round brass. No, um, it's not a Glock. It shouldn't be expected to eat everything. But at the same time, I shouldn't be having to worry so much about it the way I have been, uh, which is why I decided not to, not to carry it anymore. Uh, so I'm kind of revisiting this because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I should get another Grand Power. Uh, so they have their Mark 23 variants. And I am in need of a gun that I can take to training courses. I don't want a small gun. I want either a compact or a duty sized gun for training courses. And I do have some of those, but I would much rather have one that has an optics cut um, and that gives me an advantage. Grand Powers, they shoot great. 
they shoot great. Um, so I would, I, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having a, a grand power, um, if, if the Q1 or the Q100, uh, Mark 23, Mark 23 variant of this gun, uh, if it shoots as well as this gun, then uh, yeah, I, I want it for training. Uh, but I am kind of iffy right now because I'm thinking, well, if this gun is having an issue and maybe it's not me, maybe it is the gun, well, why would I buy another grand power? You know, so, so I'm kind of trying to weigh things, uh, but, uh, they are beautiful guns. They shoot well, they're extremely accurate. Uh, and, 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 you know, all of that, you know, is, is really dependent upon the wielder as well. But, uh, I'm not going to lie. I, this is, this is one of the guns that, that I shoot the best. That is not a 1911. Uh, this shoots just as well as my bull offering, my, my ultralight. Uh, I just wish that it was more trustworthy. So, so the plan is, is like, we're going to, we're going to reassess things and take a look at things. Once we hit 2000 rounds, I'll give you guys another update. Um, and I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that we don't have any, uh, failures you know, to return to battery or, or, or otherwise. So, uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. So I did a video yesterday and I was about to post it. And then I went to the range, uh, yesterday evening. Uh, so this is an update to what you've just seen. Um, so this is the, let me see, one, two, three, four, five. So last night's visit was the sixth visit to the range without any issues. And so that's the longest string of non issues uh, that we've recorded thus far. Uh, so we're pr pretty much in uncharted territory, uh, uncharted territory, but uh, there were no issues. Um, we now have 1831 rounds through the gun uh the extra um uh grip tape uh, helped a lot um so it actually feels like a, a cushing cushioned material um again no misfeeds no failures to return the battery um the mag did fall out once at the very beginning of the uh the range visit um but I've been working on my grip and I think what I did was I accidentally hit that. Uh, it didn't happen again. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so the next range visit that we do, we might break uh, 2000. And again, we're at, uh, it, you know, the next range visit will be the seventh um, range visit with no issues. Um, and so we shot 72 rounds last night. So that's almost 500 rounds of no issues. Uh, and, and, and keep in mind, I am cleaning the gun after every range visit. Um, not drastically so. Uh, this time around, uh, before I went to the range, I wiped down the carbon. You know, I, I wiped off the carbon and I looped it. So before I was kind of just doing a whole shebang of taking a... Uh, a soft brush and brushing it off and you know using COP to kind of loosen up uh, any hard carbon but this time I just kind of wiped down the areas that are problematic and I put a light coating of oil on them uh, but so the gun is clear we will go ahead and uh, do a quick breakdown of the gun I'll do it off camera <clears throat> so Again, this is 72 rounds of crud. So I'll, sh I'll hold up the uh, barrel here. Seventy-two rounds of crud. It looks a lot more than seventy-two rounds. Um, here, let me get something to wipe my hands with because I don't want to get any 
oil and nastiness on this uh, on this grip tape. So here is the portion of the gun that is actually uh, that is actually suspect. Um, 72 rounds that looks like a lot more than 72 rounds of carbon. Uh, and this is with pretty decent ammo. What what did we shoot? Uh, we shot some. We didn't shoot any Igman this time. Hold on a second. Let me get my notes. Uh, it was all blazer. Which has been good to me. You know, I don't want to be asking everyone's opinion on ammo brand A or B because there's always going to be that one person that doesn't like a particular brand, but it's not, it's not Wolf. And keep in mind that Wolf, we have shot Wolf through this gun, a large amount of Wolf, and it didn't choke the gun. So not all cheap ammo is bad. The problems I had were with mainly, I think, Tula. So, yeah, I mean, mainly the carbon is here. And that's where the barrel rests. Right, right there. It pivots on that, that pin. Uh, there's no carbon on that area where the camming pin rests. Uh, there is carbon on the, on the pin itself, but it's not hard carbon. The only hard carbon is here. It's like it's baked on and uh, I guess rightly so since that's where the barrel rests and that barrel does get hot. Uh, the slide isn't all that bad. I'm hoping the uh, focus on this is actually pretty good. It looks like it is. But there you go. I mean, that's more than what I wanted to show. Um, I just thought it would be kind of neat to kind of show what the gun looks like with the minimum amount of ammo shot through it. Um, that's like a box and a box and a half. Um, so that's that's what everyone should expect when they shoot the gun. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is not lube that area. I can certainly try and not lube this area, um, but that that I'm not sure if that's a good thing to do. Uh, what you're seeing here, where I I did put a very light coating of lube on there of COP, so because it's metal on metal and I do know that there's going to be some uh, some rubbing between those two so but anyways there we go uh, almost 1900 rounds 1831 uh, we, we're going to try and break through that range in the next range visit we're going to uh, we're going to break into the 2000 round range more than likely then because it's like a hundred and seventy hundred and seventy rounds huh, that might that's kind of a lot maybe the next two visits all right bye bye